you sit down, focus on the breath, and allow the mind to be open and empty for a bit, you'll find a lot of the things you've been saying in the course of the day come back to you. Not that you find yourself talking to yourself a lot. And the habits of speech you have in the course of the day are going to affect the habits of speech while you're meditating. So you have to be very careful. This is why the Buddha put right speech as the first factor of the path, right after the discernment factors, once you understand suffering and its causes and how to put it into it, and you make up the mind that you really do want to follow the, this path. The Buddha has you look at your speech. And there are a couple of tests you can take for speech. Now John Fuhring's test was, is this necessary? Now there's some, what you might call social grease speech, which is useful. But as with any engine, if you put too much grease in the engine, it mucks up the works and then the engine doesn't run. So you have to be very careful about what your intention is as you talk with one another. You know, make sure that what you say is true and beneficial. And the right time and the right place. Those are the th three tests that the Buddha had for his own speech. He was confronted one time. Someone asked him, would he ever say anything that was displeasing to other people? And the, their plan was that if he said no, then he, they would say, well, you, actually you're on, on record having said things that displeased Devadatta, after Devadatta had tried to kill the Buddha. And if he said yes, then they'd say, well, what's the difference between, between you and ordinary people? But the Buddha didn't say yes or no to the question. He said, that question doesn't deserve a categorical answer. And right there, they, the person who asked him the trick question knew that he'd been defeated. The Buddha went on. It turned out that the person who asked the question had his baby son sitting on his lap. And so the Buddha asked him, if your baby son ever got a sharp object in his mouth, what would you do? And the person said, well, I'd hold his head with one hand, and with the other hand I would try to get the object out, even if it meant drawing blood. Why is that? Because he had compassion for the child. And the Buddha said, in the same way, whatever he would say would be true and beneficial. And as for the right time to say pleasing things, and the right time to say displeasing things, you have to look very carefully at that. But even displeasing things can be useful, can be compassionate. So if you're going to say something displeasing, make sure that it is compassionate. And as for your true speech, make sure that it really is beneficial. Sometimes you can say true things, but it doesn't really serve a purpose right then, right there. So in a case like that, it's good to hold back. They say silence is golden, so you want to make sure that when you break silence, you have something even better to offer. This way, as you develop good speech as you go through the day, you're careful about your speech. Then when you sit down to meditate, okay, the habits that you've picked up in the course of the day will be good habits. And you, you'll be able to direct your speech in, inside in the right way, to getting the breath, mind, breath good, getting the mind to settle down. So this is one of the reasons why right speech is an important part of the path. And it's good practice. Try to say things that are useful, that are true. The Buddha never had any idea that things that were not true could be beneficial. That wasn't a possibility they entertained at all. So make sure first it's true, two, it's beneficial. And three, it's the right time and the right place for that kind of speech. So when you sit down and meditate, you ask the same questions of your thoughts. Is this true? Is this beneficial? Is this the right time and place for this? You find oftentimes that the answer for that right time and place is, well, it's no. Now is the time to focus on talking to yourself about the breath, talking to yourself about getting the mind to settle down. And when you're used to keeping some control over your speech in the course of the day, it's easier to control your speech as you meditate. So keep these thoughts in mind as you go through the day. Because the way you live your daily life is going to have an impact on your practice, the way you practice meditation is going to have an impact on your life. And it's good to think of the whole life as practice. That way it can build up momentum and, and develop.